Hi, I'm Dawn Marie, and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the issues and questions revolving around Wrestler's Rescue. The first question is, is it a 501c3? The answer is no. Wrestler's Rescue is a for-profit. We have a for-profit entity and we have a non-profit entity. The non-profit entity is Pro Wrestling Relief. So we have both entities and we get both benefits. We have a for-profit called Wrestler's Rescue. We have a non-profit called Pro Wrestling Relief. Any fundraising that's done, checks are made out to Pro Wrestling Relief and checks are written out of Pro Wrestling Relief. The booking agency and other ways that we're able to make money will be going through Wrestler's Rescue, the for-profit, and we pay taxes on that. We don't get the tax benefits we get off of Wrestler's uh, for Pro Wrestling Relief. So it's very simple. Wrestler's Rescue is our for-profit. Our non-profit is Pro Wrestling Relief. Okay? Um, with that being said, I would like to start from the beginning of Wrestler's Rescue and just go through a lot of questions that have been out there. Um, the first one being Dr. Death Steve Williams' campaign. When I first spoke with Dr. Death, he had a stoma. He had just battled cancer. And for those of you who don't know, it's a device in the throat that has a hole so he's able to communicate. And he has to put his uh, kerchief over it, a uh, handkerchief or his hand over it, and it blocks the dust and it will block the hole in order for him to resonate to speak. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to help him raise the funds to get a hands-free device. Because he was also still wrestling with the stoma, it was dangerous for him because of the dust getting into his stoma. We started to raise funds, and unfortunately his cancer came back. And um, the bills started to add up for him. I offered to him, I said, you know, your cancer came back. Would you like for me to give you the money? We don't need to use it for a hands-free device. Use the dollars to help battle your fight right now. He said, no, 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 I'm going to get better. I need, I'm going to get better and I'm going to get my hands-free device by Christmas. Well, unfortunately, his cancer never went away. And it just got worse. And his medical bills really started accruing. And he came to me and he said, you know, I think, darling, we're going to have to use that money for some medical expenses. So I wrote him a check and I sent it out to him and he cashed it and um, so he did receive money while he was still alive and it did go towards his medical expenses. And if you go on wrestlersrescue.org and you press the financial button up on the top, you'll see every single dollar that came in for that campaign and every single dollar that went out You'll see a copy of the check with the signed signature on the back showing that he did receive money prior to him passing away and he did use that for medical expenses. After Dr. Death Steve Williams, there was a gentleman named Michael Porter. Michael Porter was someone who helped Vince put up the rings when they were in California on the, uh, like non-televised events. And I think once or twice he filled in for Howard Finkel because Howard wasn't available to come in. And um, unfortunately, this doesn't qualify him as a professional wrestler in our industry. So he came to me looking for about $500 because he was back due on his rent. He said he had some problems with his SSI. And I expressed to him that I'm sorry, but we're not in the business of giving out money for rent that we help with health care issues and health care needs. And he, you know, kept talking to me and I felt bad for him. So I told him that if he had friends in the business that he can call, that I wouldn't give him any of our numbers, but if he had his own numbers to call and he got merchandise from them, that they can send it to Wrestler's Rescue, we would be the, we would be the facilitator. We would also sell the merchandise on our website because we do have high traffic on our website and we would sell the items and then give them the money, but it was on two conditions. One is we needed the eviction letter saying that he was being evicted and two, a notarized letter from his landlord stating that he would be willing to work with us and work with the program and not evict Michael Porter. Well, I never received any of the paperwork. 
I then expressed to Michael's uh, friend Paula at the time because she was she was transferring conversations back and forth. Uh, we were unable to help them. That we never received the paperwork, and that you know I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do to help you. At that time, some merchandise had come in. It was um, some pictures from Chris Masters, uh, Dan Severin, Samoans, Scott Hall, I believe. Yeah, I know Scott Hall. And what I did was I called up each individual person and I asked them, would you like me to send back your merchandise or would you like me to keep it here and give it to the next person? And obviously, they were all 8 by 10s they didn't want their 8 by 10s back. They just said, keep it for the next person. Scott Hall had sent a bunch of t-shirts and things like that. He said, Dawn, keep it. Don't you dare send it back to me. <laughs> so that's what happened with Michael Porter. When I told them that I would not be able to help them, they told me that I would pay for it. Well, I did pay for it. I lost a three book deal with Medallion Press, and I also lost a television show for Wrestler's Rescue because they went on a campaign, a smear campaign, and they used Dr. Death Steve Williams as the person they were going to get me with. They said that I never gave Dr. Death any money. They said that I was a very bad person and a lot of ugly things. But if you go to wrestlersrescue.org and you go to the financial button, again, all of those accusations are proven false. And I have all the proof right there. After that came Jerry Lynn. Well, Jerry Lynn, he's a great guy. Anyone that knows him knows he's a great guy and I consider him a friend. He called me last summer and he told me about what was going on with his back and asked me what Wrestler's Rescue was about. So I told him what Wrestler's Rescue was about but that I was unsure if I'd be able to help him because of the smear campaign that we were just coming out of. I then had some appearances and such and I would collect items from people and friends and co-workers for Jerry's campaign, started to do that. I called the Cauliflower Alley Club in his, uh, on his behalf and the Cauliflower Alley Club sent him $1,000 and then towards Christmas time they decided to send him another $1,000 so he got $2,000 from Cauliflower Alley Club. I unfortunately was not able to do a campaign for Jerry because there was just too much damage left over from the smear campaign. So what I did with those items that I collected was I kept them in our storeroom and I'm just going to use them for the next person we do a fundraiser for. There were some 8x10s, a doll, you know, nothing of great value, just things that would add up and collect some money. Then we come to Jimmy Snuka.